It's all about Sticko. We know you can't spell Team Spirit without M-I-R, and we know that Sticko, the last time they played, is putting up the ADR. He has been phenomenal this event. Shout out to Sticko. Again, one of the only transformations that I've ever seen of a support player turning into like a consistent star player that I can remember. So hopefully this is going to be a banger. I think it could be 2-0. I think it could be 2-1. Predictions super hard to call, but this should be one of the best matches so far at Masters. And the final European match as well for the group stage. 12 days up, 12 days down. We'll have the break before we come back with the playoffs. So get in your dose of DreamHack EU here and now. Down the ramp is where the T's will head. It's a bit of a delayed gunfight, but I disbalance opens up. Mir, he's making sure all of the corners on the bomb site are clear. Doesn't really trust that the B site fell so easily, but sure enough, we do have the defense with three CTs deep on the bomb site. That one flank in Farlig could be caught. It is him versus Magix, but Stiko getting the head of Magix starts to make the retake happen. SDY out from the yellow train, looking for more bodies as Mir rounds it, and now everybody seems to be compromised. But Farlig does drop down to the bomb site and manages another headshot. Chopper lets him get past. Chopper's oh. gonna be flushed out into the open because of the Molotov, and it seems like Farlig's looking for a kit or something. He's scrambling on the bomb site, gets gushed and down. Team Spirit taking pistol. The comms get a bit hairy, but man, there were some snappy headshots from both sides there. Very, very close pistol round. Chopper makes the correct play by falling out. Even if the kit was picked up, it wouldn't have been possible to trade out that frag once he got on the floor. So that little bit of damage was a smart move by Mr. Choppa and a big win for Team Spirit. Four spies, both sides. Scout and the pistols for Godsent. Lots of grenades, though. Love to see it. Got Team Spirit looking to make quick work of this one. Need to dodge the artillery. Zen and Madden able to combine for one. And here comes Farlig with that deagle. He doesn't even have armor and he's managed two frags already. Taking to the top office, being spotted by Mir. Looking to use that AK, looking to use the verticality of the train yard to his advantage. But everything kind of has to slow down here. There's only two T's left. Oh, make that one. Madden connects the scout shot and godsend explosively right back into this. Now, Mir does suss out Farlig first, and that's a big scalp to take, but he's gonna have to figure out where Crystal and Madden are while also trying to find his bomb. And well, we can see they didn't make enough space there to allow them to win this round cleanly. Gave Godsent a lot of opportunities. Mir sussing out the scene, bomb dropped in front of him. It seems like they're giving him a lot of respect right now. This time could work for Mir. He doesn't pick up the bomb. Seems convinced that there's a ladder player. This will burn some time off the clock. He can come back. It looks like they're going to allow him to pick it up. They might peek out here assuming that there's going to be an inner walkout. But yeah, he wants this first kill before anything begins. Oh, he saw the feet of Crystal. He's going to come in for this one. But oh no, he's just going to walk right into Madden who's got the pistol out. Mir down for the count as he didn't expect Madden to also be tucked in Z. Unfortunate, but awesome round. And you saw by the deaths here from the T side, everybody over towards this D box. Farlig, those first two kills. Madden clearing once the smoke fades. And the Deagle versus CZ finale that causes the upset. 1-1. One, one. Godsend right back into this. Oh, man. Just the, they didn't expect that rotate into the double Z. Ends up being the correct play from Godsend. It covers a lot of options. That push into B was obviously one of them, one of the most important ones. And although Crystal dies, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Now, the last time that they played, they had Makalele. Godsend had Makalele in the closed qualifier. And they still won. Now they've got Farlig, the, Daner, the dangerous Danish man, and he has been extraordinary. I think officially a stand-in, but how is he How is he not going to have a place on this team after what we've seen so far? I feel like he earned the contract even with just those two Deagle kills last round. Man, blew him away. Already Spirit going to lose Magics over on Ivy. He's not the only player here. I just balance, trying to stay in cover as Zen Keeps him tucked. Chopper comes over, double peek, and it is good for the trade frag. Tech nine, down the ivy. There's a single smoke still for Mir. Molotov, and a flash on the opposite side. 
Yeah, you've been pointing it out. We've seen a whole hell of a lot of Tech Nines. It's just feeling great. Saw a very highly upvoted Reddit thread about how the community is really loving the Tech Nine right now, saying it feels super good to use. Yeah, it's dropping the CZ stock, coming more into the pro play. Having an impact. Tech Nine up to bat one more time. Will, will it win versus an AUG is a different question, but they've also picked up an AK to work with. Yep. M4 cuts down Ivy. Some die young in with the Deagle. Only that one kill versus Zen. So excellent round here for Godsent, converting thoroughly, keeping the AUG and M4 up. They'll have that double MP9 to play around with. But unfortunately for Team Spirit, that momentum they started with Pistol, yeah, it's entirely gone. They're going to have mm -hmm. to save again in this one. Yeah, it's been wiped. They've got 10 kills so far in this game in the three rounds that we've seen. It's a mixed bag for Godsent at the moment. I think Crystal is, he's one of hes one of the very good clutch players of the game, but of course, consistently in terms of ADR, slacks a bit and he's playing inner. So it might be a good move for Team Spirit to try to open up rounds by fighting him more often. And it looks like the bomb gets dropped on the site, but within range of Crystal to continue fighting on. One Glock kill to the name of Team Spirit. Crystal goes down, but no bomb is planted. That's the most important part. Spirit will now buy up. They're a little bit light on grenades for magics, and uh, some of them gets everything he wants, so it's not, not a bad buy overall. And Ida's Balance also has an off. So it seems like they have the appropriate tools to make their dreams a reality in round five. All right, the game should start now. I love that you called out Crystal. You know, and then he was the pinnacle hold on that B bomb site, making the most of one of the two MP9s that were in that previous round. Gets right up on the smoke, just like Skiko's going to try to do here on the ladder this this round. Hmm. So, one SMG, of course, still in play. Oh, I'm a I'm a really big fan of Godsend setup, but they are pinned at these two choke points, right? Because you've got the ladder player who's relying on the T-Con watch, and two down Ivy who are far rotates. B could be an excellent play here for for Spirit. Off the flashes, they will push by. Seems that smoke's gonna go deep, and there's a second one with it. So, very much moving forward here. Crystal, he's given up. He is not playing on the bomb site as seen previously in the last round, but he is gonna throw himself forward. He's the planter in the middle of it all, and Magix comes in with the gun up. What's up? Down goes Crystal. It's not over just yet, though. Although, not getting any easier. Madden also dying to the rifles here. CT's trying to force the issue. The sniper's gonna give a bit of cover. Farlig and Zen, both still far back, have not seen an open route. Nice off play here from Idis Balance. Getting the scope up, dealing with Zen, and forcing Farlig to walk away. Team Spirit just bombarding the B site and doing it real clean. Now, although I disbalance sounds like a bootleg Apple product, he is clearly the real deal. This guy versus FaZe was hitting amazing op shots and making up for the fact that they didn't have Mir. Here on this round comes through with the two op entries. The trades are great and they put so much pressure on Godsend setup. We've officially got a game. They found a timing window that calls out all of the great map control that Godsend had to their name. And because the rotates were just a little bit too labored, nobody came into Z in time to stop the defuse, and no one was in the site ready to fight because Crystal was all alone and knew it. Double ops. <clears throat> Double ops. Double ops immediately here for Godsent, and uh, well, you're far compensating league. now. You're compensating. I was trying to sound like you. Was uh, it close? Yeah, sure. That was actually not bad. Can you cast this round like me? Uh, my brain's not that big. Half a round? Sure. Uh, well, you know, the, the, the Molotov goes down in the top, and uh, this, you know, if you think of Pythagorean's theorem... I'm way more uh, interesting than this. Go ahead. <laughs> That's subjective. Smoke goes deep towards ramp, and also the T's thrown in utilities of their own. Flashbangs, but no bodies right away. It's off of the follow-up flashes that Crystal's gonna have key players raining down on him and Farlig raining death off the off. The double sniper setup works right away. And Idis Balance has no teammates to help him. Oh, we've He's got alone. the innovation going both ways. We've got the immediate double op adjustment. So Godsend, I'm loving the idea factory that they've got working, where they're going from this really aggressive two-man setup in the ladder and as well at Ivy. And now on this round, when things don't work out versus the B hit, they, they involve themselves with the double op and it's the perfect exploit. Ida's balance would look, like to just save if possible, but overall, such a clean round from Godsend. They maintain the two ops, the three alive, 
And uh, Team Spirit, they've only won that one round, so we'll see how they do. If Idis Balance died somehow, they might not be able to buy. But since he stays alive, we might get the two rifle rounds in a row. But it's another B hit. This time, it looks a lot different. You know, you don't want to see a team wait too long to make an adjustment like that. So it's kind of cool that Godsend just kind of all in it right away on their last dollar. And it works superbly. Crystal, though. I mean, that's a playmaker position. First man doesn't even see him. Magic sweeps him away. But it was really far like here with the AWP kind of taking his his time on the first shot, ensuring he got it. Madden is well on top of the train, so you see again the advantage of playing on the top of trains, the advantage of having that, that yeah. vertical line of sight makes uh, the bomb sites so difficult. And I mean, that can be weaponized, obviously, by the terrorists if they can come out from T-Con. It's one of the beauties of the A site, really helps with the rifles, especially if you're in the anti-ecos, but uh, this is no eco for either side. In fact, it's pretty proactive. Godsend using the deep smoke, playing off the flash buying, putting Steko into T-Con, and trying to get the information here. Not wanting to fall blind to whatever Team Spirit have in mind. Yeah, quite interesting. Once again, they seek out the information. This time, they don't do it with the two-man setup, though. So they're in a really good position to hold versus B. We saw how they were just a couple of seconds from being able to stop it last time. That is a decent grenade. It was a bit of a misbounce, but they've got the rotations. Two and B, one on fast flank, IV control. They know. They're ready. Oh, he's going to fly out on the ramp. Oh, Ooh, beautiful. Off of the flash there from Zen as well. Zen's ready with an AK up. Only good for the one. I just balance. I mean, he needs teammates to get these spaces for him to prevail with that AWP. Madden trying to come in from Z, loses his target. And I love that. Team Spirit wasting no time to get SDY down onto the floor here with the bomb carrier. It's I disbalance this task to try and hold back, but be cautious. There is the flank. That's Stiko on the ramp. Could very well walk down. He's going to hear the footsteps of I disbalance, but Magix is also trying to keep him honest here, keeping him pinned in, ready for that peak. The young Magix. Farlig going to fade away. Looking like a save here. That double op, you know it's crucial for Godsend's hold, and that means it's instrumental. It means it's invaluable for them to save. They do lose one of the two snipers, but that's it. Team Spirit getting down onto the B bomb site once more. This time, Magic's being the difference maker. Holding off Stiko's flank, moving forward afterwards to cut down more mm -hmm. bodies. Just, again, the commitment to B is clean. Yeah, Crystal, you know, they're they're able to abuse him. It's it's making a big difference, even though Godsend had such a fantastic setup overall across the map. They're going for a lot of map control for free. You know, when you double push down IV, half of you wants to see someone, half of you doesn't. Because if you push through, no one's there, then your teammates can rotate, focus on B. They had the two in sight this time around. It was, it was an upgraded setup from the last time they tried it. You thought for sure that they'd be able to pick it up. Putting the T in train, Spirit are eight and two on train in the last three months, winning 60% of the T side rounds. Well, that's an interesting one because so far we've seen better adjustments from Godsend, more one dimensional play from Team Spirit. And I think despite all that, they're winning. But if I were to look at long term, you know, are they going to win more rounds in this half considering what we've seen? I don't know. I feel good about Godsend so far. An average of nine rounds on the T side of train. I think that's pretty big. That's, yeah, uh, that's a damning stat line. I like it. So they're a third of the way to their average at the moment, but they do still trail by one. The only thing about that stat is Krieg nerf is not that long ago. So some of the trains, uh, some of the train side train rounds are going to be skewed by that. Uh, the T side rounds, excuse me, on maps. Fair enough. Yeah. It just, is good to put, a, put, a, put an asterisk on it. Yeah, it's not often that we can compare metas like that, but uh, this might specific, this specific instance, I think there's something to be said. Now, Madden's scrambling as he gets to upgrade from his MP9. Zen forward facing, looking to decon, just hoping there's not going to be anyone in the ladder. Dinks go back and forth. He's dinked, he's dinked, 10 health, 10 health. Nope, he's got lots of health left over. He'll be fine to peek again. He will do so on the other side. I just balance. Gonna have to hit that close shot. In fact, both the CTs ready for the close proximity. And there's a bit of a disjointed timing versus Zen. So not only does he get his first kill, but Chopper burns Crystal's Molotov on point. CT's back in with a man advantage and one better. Crystal's off. 
catching the counter sniper. Magic's trying to come in with a clutch here. Fast reaction. So quick, in fact, that he didn't even get the first kill, but still ready for the secondary peak. Godsent survived with three. That's a huge round for them to pick up. I love the way that Zen plays this. They actually peel back off this execute, and then Crystal catches the fallback right before this kill. We had Zen, who's playing right beside Tcon. He is taking a gamble, and he's doing it a 4v3, and it's a very smart gamble. It's when he exposes himself to ladder, but he gets a nice off angle for Tcon, calls out that they're not pushing from ladder, and that's all they needed to do. You know, nets him that first frag, damage on the second guy results in a molly kill on the fallback, and uh, Ivy gets shut down because they still have the op in play. So a 3v4 won there by Godsend, and this time it's versus an outside take that looked relatively successful at the beginning. I'm gonna raise you on that one, bro. 3v5. 3v5. 3v5 oh. for Godsend, and it turns around Team Spirit to fall back onto pistols. So that was a yeah. pivotal round. Everybody remember number eight, you know? It, it was looking likely that Team Spirit could have had momentum off of the back of that one. Instead, it shifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Spirit went around inside versus a good setup from Godsend, and then lose around outside, uh, although they have a better setup uh, versus Godsend. So it seems like, um, well, it just seems like both teams are, are playing well from a certain perspective. Zen, top blue, looking for the first kill. There will now be a ladder player, I think, to come and fight him, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, no, that's the guy box calls. Doing Open his own line thing. of sight. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed as well now that I now that I think about the stakes of that last round as well. It's a three versus five, but how many three V fives are one where all three of those players actually also stay up, you know? Not a single death mm -hmm. after those initial two entries for spirit. So so a door that seemed to have slammed shut. Just like this round, but much more understandable here because of the limited weaponries. Crystal, very wary of the B flank entirely aware of the possibility so no surprise that chopper gets cut down now the p250 walking out from tcon i like that he's trying to play that surprise timing but uh, he they're wants not, to knife. try not to kill him <laughs> yeah i love they're, it i love it that was so confusing for a second yeah he was just trying to delay for time that would have been really great i mean he should have just kept running that would have been super funny and it would have also killed him after time Magis probably would have knocked the kill down if far like had the op so I'm not going to lie, I, I looked at Farlig for a second and I really just thought that the Observer had changed perspective and that I was yeah. watching CTs run away. <laughs> and then I realized what's going on, man. Oh, damn. That's fun. Really playing with Farlig. You know, means God sent, uh, they're, they're, they're comfortable in the moment. You know, that, that's not a panicky situation. But uh, they have a reason to panic if this one keeps up the tempo because Team Spirit, they're already charging into the B site and they're doing it with numbers. Madden in through Z. Crystal activates from down on the bomb site. Good for the first. But the bomb carrier itself is engulfed in flames. And Team Spirit, they could force the issue to the B site. But everybody's here. They've lost their footing. And it's never going to get any easier. Stiko's going to get up close on the smoke. Chopper trying to grab the bombs, making a ton of ruckus. And Stiko even gives himself away here. But he's able to manage through the smoke. So all is good. Chopper with the first one down. Now lays the smoke to try and play off of this. Sees the player on the top side, who then moves... And that's a great idea. Still looking for the headshot is Chopper. He grabs the bomb. Can he get out of here? I don't Shouldn't know. Be. Yeah. Farley. Don't think so. Farley. He's got a heavy, he's got a heavy snipe, man. He does not miss the easy shots. He is a he is pretty beastly. Ten and three so far in the game. They they've done well. I, I actually like the in-between timing from Godsend to come through and to be fast P, crystals alone once again. It's not been two man setups at the get at the get-go. It's been two man setups after Godsend seek out some information. Don't know if Team Spirit are aware of that, but it, it seemed to make sense to try to press in a little bit early. But Crystal, shout out to him. He's been doing a good job of staying alive into the retake situations. You know, mainly not dying is sometimes the best thing you can do. And they're earning themselves another eco. Seven to three, Godsent. They, they just look very good. They look very good. I mean, I, I thought Spirit would be able to take it over the line this time around, but so far, Godsent have been doing nothing but uh, impressing us. How would you like that timing? Yeah, I like. I like it. I'm a happy man. Many reasons to be happy. This, this game has been delivering so far, and it's nice to see Godsent putting up that defense because it looked like Team Spirit. We're gonna start chewing through it. Now they're scrambling to find answers. They're scrambling for cash as well. You know, the ecos that they've had to take have definitely allowed Godsent to extend this lead. 
But I don't want to chalk it up to just that because, uh, look, it's uh, also been great gun rounds. I'm waiting to see a significant shift in the strategy of spirit, you know? Uh, it's like, okay, B-Side's been toasted a couple of times, boys. How about that mm -hmm. fast T-Con A hit? You know, test, uh, test the grenades outdoors a little. I think they totally could. That's probably on the horizon. They, they, they have tried the slow out. They also can say that on their slow out T-Con play, they were able to get the first two kills. So, you know, that's something where they could be like, well, we could try that again. That worked out actually quite well. Let's just tighten up. When we re-aggress, we know Zen made this one adjustment. We can keep that in the back of our mind when we try again, and maybe we'll have a different result. I, I think there's potential there. A bit more love towards Ivy and Ladder as well could be enormous. Jump out here to bait a shot. Mir gets into position. So many grenades come their way, which is nice for the T side. And although they do a slight reset, I think they're not in a bad spot. Oh, okay. How, who the... Some die young, some self-immolate. I swear that... I swear he bounced it off the wall. I'd like a slow-mo of that. If I can make no requests. Reg. Yeah. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes we've got to do a little investigation of our own. Yeah, we've definitely caught some bugs on this broadcast. Zen loving his awareness so far this match and in fact just throughout the whole tournament i feel like he fills in the gaps better than most ct players that we've seen play recently scary spot promising for a team spirit that nobody is old bomb right now let's look at the cts there two of them are looking backwards three even sometimes oh, farley just crossed that angle yeah farley's trying to call out this offer He's challenging oh. him. Oh, that is dirty. Let's see if the T's decide to respond off of it. They are. Great pinch in from Magic. Sure, you might have just owned the Opper, but there are more problems for you to deal with. Crystal's going to come out from the ladder room, and down he goes as well. Bonus points to Farlick. Big Amazing. bonus points. You know, he, he, I was just thinking to myself, like, yeah, these CTs, they're in awkward positions. Yeah, he bounced that off the wall, man. Yeah. Bit of a... Bit of Hello. a skamaz there. The Eben. dude, that that shot, I mean, that, that shot was nice, but they had they actually have they had no response to the Ivy control. Like Team Spirit were standing at the top of Ivy, like, all right, no one's peeking us, no one's old bomb, no one's peeking the corner, no one's rotating around. Okay, guess we outside split, right? Because that's the whole point of Ivy. Um now to be fair to Godsend, they have pushed down Ivy three rounds this game. That just seemed to be the in-between round where Godsent weren't giving it much love, but here they get control of it quickly again, and it's like it's back to B. Crystal up close on ramp this time, though. Yeah, heard the footsteps. I was going to say, for for a player whose you know, individuals can sometimes be in question, he does make those kinds of confident plays where he throws himself forward and puts himself inside of the tees. Like, the, the sorts of plays where you're probably going to die, but if you pull it off, you're going to get a couple kills with you. They are uh -oh. going to call out Stiko's flank. Whoa, he gets his crosshair back in place just in the nick of time. Goes Swing ahead baby. and tucks, and he's waiting on the opposite side. Some die young, get Crystal and Stiko baited into the peak by Chopper, who cuts him down. 4v3 now, Team Spirit still with some nice utility. That smoke could go down ramp to enable them to hit the B site yet again. Because Stiko dies at like that 50 second mark, we see the response in Zen having to come clear deep T spawn. So it Here. is a far rotate from the B site. Just, yeah, they just need to rotate to enter. They've got the double ops. Uh, Farleg doesn't really have to watch this for the meantime, but they're staying steady. So Madden, he's got a big job on his hands, not being able to throw grenades for himself. Oh, a couple of great op frags. Looking wow. for three, he puts him on the board. And the Dude. fourth, gnarly from Madden. I mean, he knew his rotate was far from there. They didn't decide to throw that smoke down in front of him, though. And that's why he gets this first one. You can see Chopper with the grenades. Magic's had a chance to trade. Even some Dai Young was, was responsibly and responsibly just waiting for him to peek back up from the cover. But no, sir, you don't get a chance. If he knows where you're at, he is going to drop you down. That is 16 and 5 for Madden. Awesome 4K hold towards that B site.
You love that. It happens in a very short timing window, but if you look at every single one of those kills, slightly different position every single time. Just beautiful variation on that play. Another eco, potentially mow down here. Yeah, for the eco gonna swing out. Eco's gonna get another couple. Bomb's gonna be thrown down, and then that split comes in from T-Con. So Madden and Farlig both with scopes up. They know where the danger zone is, so they just hone in on it. A 10th round for Godsend. Excellent CT side. Again, remember that stat line that uh, Elliot was so kind to give us. 60% round win rate on the T side of train. That should be nine for Spirit. And yet they are just shooting for a fifth one here in the 15th and final attempt of their T side. And there's a lot of rounds where it got Team Spirit. I think they had some good starts, some good executes, some good opening kills, but I don't think Godsend have gotten lucky by any means. I think some of their setups and response have been fantastic. I think all the individual plays have been amazing. Crystal staying alive in B versus the executes gives them hope. The double off setup adjustment early on. Lots of great things to say about the way Godsend have adjusted as well. And the double IV push finally results in a kill. I don't think Team Spirit have found this push one so far this half, and Godsend have done it four or five times now. Full belts of utility still for what remains here of Spirit. They've lost to 3v5s. Can they win a 3v5? I just balanced Molly out of his position, blinded as well here. So counter terrorists, because they are still bodies in abundance, do not shy away from using those nades. We're at the 50 second mark and they're all still waiting for the execute, but it's another B ramp commitment and Madden in position. Ooh, a near shot over the top of the trains. A second player to take that place. I just balanced wants to find these off frags and he gets the first, takes the leg shot from the counter sniper. So he is low and down he goes. Madden looking for his 20th kill in these 15th rounds. If Mir is his final victim, then he's got it. But Farlig, that secondary scope, another great op player here for Godsend. And those two snipers that we've seen between Farlig and Madden have had Madden. On May 26th, 2020, Team Spirit took 10 T rounds on Train versus Phase, while just a match later, Godsend only had two CT rounds versus Fnatic. Now make of that what you will, but I would say three days sure as hell made a difference for Team Godsend, and now we have them in a huge lead here on the start of the second half. It's not nearly over, and we know Team Spirit are capable on train, but it's gonna be a long haul if they are to make this comeback happen, and a second round pistol win would certainly kick it off strong. Five rounds to win the game. Godsend are in pull position by a mile. Team Spirit, as we talked about, you know, Krieg nerf or not, have positive halves on T-side, and Godsend have already shut that down. I'm sure they're feeling pretty good as Mir scouts out in T-Con to see if there's any pushes. And it looks like he's kind of found Sanctuary. We'll actually go a step farther. Crystal aiming a little bit too high there. Fractions would have been another problem, but it was a, a sliver of an angle, so at least he doesn't die. God said peel back off of IV. What is the plan? It looks like they just had a feeling that Team Spirit would try to push. They found that avenue of interest. And look at Team Spirit. They are so far back on the site. Keeping these long distances with the USPs could be the antidote. Ooh, deep ivy smoke coming out of crystal. That one pops first. Blocks off a lot of vision. Crystal gonna use the most of that smoke. Understanding that a CT could be tucked behind Ivy, but Crystal Smoke just enables him to literally sprint and put that bomb in. I mean, you do have Chopper coming over the top of the train, and Crystal, good for a second. He is near the one-man army in this pistol, setting up his own bomb plant, killing the players that tried to push him, and leaving Team Spirit in an awful position. It was the 2v5 post plant. It all crumbled. God sent picking up second pistol and taking that momentum they had in the first, using it right away here. Look at that. There's so many shots missed by Chopper. He unfortunately drops a shot on the head and gets killed by the guy he was shooting at who was trying to plant the bomb. Crystal turns that into two kills, and that's the turning point. Of course, the bomb could have got stopped. Chopper could have potentially got another kill as his teammate was preoccupied with a different angle. There's another a no, lot of ways that Team Spirit could have won that round. Unfortunately, everything went wrong in a series of unfortunate events. Double scout. Three deagles, smoke, and a frag. That's what Team Spirit are gonna come in with. 
This is gonna delay their full-fledged buy round, so let's hope that they can do what Godsent did. An upset in the second, but no sir. Crystal again gonna get on the board first. Madden looked Looking like he was on scrambling Madden's to get on the ladder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my way, man. Nothing wrong with some toes, am I right? Okay. It's a B-side exec. Completely open for the taking. First. Yeah. yeah. Nothing at all. Team Spirit. I mean, listen, they were able to avoid losing one of those scouts in their first casualty, so why not just take this away and bring it into uh, round 18? Mm-hmm. I like the way that some Dayong dodges the nades. I feel like not enough people go out of their way because they want to try to remain inconspicuous. They like take a, a couple steps back and then eat like 40 damage. Some Dayong's like, no, nope, I'm getting out of the doorway. I know this nade won't hit me. And he survives Ooh. three and then comes back. That's a nice kill for a bad gun. It's almost a sabotage sometimes when the CTs are going to buy to have picked up a MAC-10 because they're like, I don't want to waste money upgrading. But if I lose this round, we might lose the game. However, this next round, of course, would have been a full-on pistol by yeah. going to recycle the, the scouts, and so it is only a boon. This was that movement you were talking about, dodging the yeah. first nade, dodging the second volley. Still runs into the MAC-10, but uh, you know what? Mir gets that MAC-10, and remember that, if I'm not mistaken, Mir was a part of the Vega squadron that, that kind of taught us all that the banana MAC-10 rush is a possibility. Totally. So he could be a fiend on this weapon. He definitely moves forward quickly. He's going to regain Whoa. his vision, and that should have been heard. This could Ooh. get him killed. Oh my God, Madden! Oh, he's not even clearing this. This is going to be. This is one of those weird ass situations. Mir has pushed in. Wow, it's not even in favor of the CTs at all. He's going to get this kill. Magus is like, what are you watching? How is this possible? And now it's turned into an outside exec as they've only rotated as far as ladder. They could just drop down. Zen is trying to watch this. Zen doesn't know if someone's pushing on him. Chopper gets the information first, but it's again, just another couple unfortunate events for Team Spirit. Yeah, Mir, his position was still unknown. So he also comes in with the element of surprise. Farlig trying not to die close versus the SMG. Gonna burn him out into the open. And the counter terror is starting to fall. It's only SDY left over. He's connecting with the Deagle. And oh, both the players back there incredibly close. He dodges the shrapnel. And he's looking for his kills, but down he goes. 14th round from Godsend. That that disjointed timing that was feeding information to the CTs. You heard them sprint away from the bomb site as if no one could hear them. And Madden had it all. The information. Name of the game. Some die young trying his damnedest back with that deagle, but it all unfolded the moment Madden activated on A. Such an unlucky timing, such an unlucky timing. If Mir had turned around and thought that someone had stuck out to sandwich, I mean, that's it. But since he doesn't do that, they get called out. Whoa, nice tag and nade. Crystal's out. He has been doing a great job entrying. I think he was one of the players holding a MAC-10 into this round, so not the biggest loss in the world. Um, and I like how uh, Godsent are establishing in this T-side by using one player to deny any IV presence. No push down will come. No push is coming on any other part of the map. Team Spirit don't have a lot of reasons to push, though. They're upper man, and they have the double up setups to fall back on. Yep. The one real gun round that they get to have before Godsent could possibly secure overtime. So I, I'm very happy to see that double sniper come out of it. I'm very happy to see that second dot fall into the hands of Magix, a young, talented, potential star. A lot of them in the CIS region. There's also a lot of them in Denmark. So that's why we keep our eyes on Farlig here for the other side. He is the bomb carrier at the moment. Also the off wielder. But I disbalance is going to cut off the player above. Now remember, all the while Zen, he was trying to get out from Pop Dog, but he's cut down over towards the A site. So it does very much fall on Farlig. He jumps onto the site, prioritizes plant, gets that injection of cash and is now gonna try to win the post plant. It's a big clutch attempt. Takes a little bit of damage first. Chopper gets blown away close, but that is still the fifth one for Team Spirit. It's a long road to make this comeback happen, but it starts with a double op setup, and that looked good. Yeah, it's a long, tumultuous, winding, uphill, cold, shoeless road to get back to 
even a tie at this point. But uh, it's it's a good round overall. F 5v4 to kick things off on, on the, that nice tag and nade combo towards Tcon on a crystal. And then from there, they press their advantage. So well done. The full buy-in, though, is here. Godsend, no Mac 10 no Deagle, Deagle on Sticko. Don't even know how that happened. And it'll be a bit more difficult for Spirit to pull this off. It'll be quite telling if they do. Great shot as Farlig. We know how comfortable he is taking those dry duels. Not surprising that eventually it doesn't work out, but he's almost so comfortable that he pre-fires these long distance, tight angles versus great oppers and expects to win, which is a level of confidence you love to see. But again, no surprise, it doesn't always work. Little drop down here from Stiko. It's already starting to get engaged by two CTs. So outnumbered, outgunned, and dead. Zen is going to answer back with his op, but uh, this is a two versus five. Yeah, they go from losing their opening kill to suddenly not looking like a team. Godsend just start to push out all these aggressive lurks and hope that they win, I guess. Would have liked to see a bit more team play in the, in the 4v5 situation. Just because you lose the opera is obviously not the end of the world. Uh, Sticko does make good ground. We see one player get out of T-Con. But, um, yeah, that, it seemed like the IGLing just stopped as soon as they lost one one player. Yeah, just trying to play that pick off spawn. Didn't quite work for them. Madden, well, he's going to cut down I disbalance and had a chance at the follow-up frag. Zen unable to find an angle all the while. Hey, but he does clear the guy from the B site and he could sprint oh. over. Now he could sprint down B or come down the ladder. Those are gonna be the two 1v1s he could opt He's for. Got, uh -huh. And with the smoke, yep, it's gonna be ramp. He's just gonna have to flash past, try to make the jump over or oh, get the pick. That would have been huge. Imagine a world where he kills some die young, bomb plants, and then has the 1v1 in the post. It could have been the round one, but it falls short and spirit keep trucking. Yeah, that goes from 60-40 for the CTs to 40-60 if he gets this one kill someday. Oh, seeing that leg stick out. <laughs> See how far that foot just stuck out. I was like, I, uh, that was so weird. That feels like the... Yeah, I didn't expect to see that much of a leg. The run out here with just the pistols. No utility Obi. whatsoever on this round. Nice and grenade. Quality grenade, baby. Very nice. More of that, please. They're going to try. And you got to give them credit for trying. If they can come down the ramp with a little gusto, maybe they don't all die in five seconds. But uh, that's looking like the world we live in. Oh, oh, great grenade. So much damage done. They are going to try and sprint past this. Chopper cleans it up. A flawless round from Spirit. Now I would have loved Godsend to have not won that pistol and maybe had a worse half, and then we'll really see how good Team Spirit are. CT side looks pretty good so far. Adding up to 22, man. He's He goes unnoticed because of the more popular players and the better players on the team, but the results speak for themselves. He clearly can frag out. Had that probably the best round of the game with that 4K hold on the B site with the op, and he's not even an opper. These are things that you love to see. I, did someone... Did Sticko take a risk there and walk down the ladder, or did someone go out T-Con and, and hold the cross? I don't know, but this is a big amount of information gained. However, someday I'm aware, trained on the angle. And look at these lurks, man. Oh, wow. What the Zen finding Idis bounce with his attention turned, and nobody, nobody was watching Ivy. That was an absolute total free walkout. They were so preoccupied with moving forward, and to be fair, that advanced front line is the reason they catch Stiko on the side of the smoke, but uh, it left them susceptible to this. Madden's even going to take the boost. Got to be cautious if you're Madden here, or Chopper, Farley. excuse me, because, yeah, he's going to walk into Farley's scope. Farley doesn't have a reason to move, but we'll see if he gets a bit lazy. He comes in, and now the push. Farley, oh, he ends up dying to the op, or to the yeah. rifle, excuse me. Bomb goes down. Zen did a good job of clearing the office, but we are still left in the 2v2. A molly that plumes in the sky. So it's not actually going to burn off the Z peak. Zen, he's going to get shot at, so he's got a good inkling as to what's up. And oh. all of this buys time for Crystal to go get the explosives, but now he's going to have to come in with the one versus two. Sure, he's got that bomb, but he's also swinging the op. 20 seconds on the clock, and both of the CTs deep on old bomb. 
This is his round to win. Goes for the Whoa. flash over on Ivy. He's crossing away, getting some distance between him and that bomb, seeing the heads, missing the first shot. He's going to have limited chances and both come up empty handed. It is Team Spirit with an eighth round on the board. Not a bad attempt there by Crystal. He took a lot of small risks, jumping towards the spot Z, flashing to peak Ivy. He had, I like, I like how he played it, you know, but uh, couldn't hit those tough shots. But this is all about Chopper, man. Chopper kills Farleg, who's holding the angle, who you'd never expect to lose a duel versus even another op that peaks him. And he destroys Farleg, who's doing nothing else but waiting for that peak. And then he comes and he kills Zen, who makes a great play to isolate him after mollying out Z. He comes and peaks the bomb train into old bomb. And, and Chopper has to do this 45 degree flick upwards, and he still is able to instantly headshot Zen. So. Totally bailed Spirit out in that situation. Really well wow. done. These these lurks are crazy from God's end. It feels like their whole game plan is based around these T side lurks, and it's all is working. Oh. It's actually wow, that's massive. I mean, just kills across the the feed in a mere matter of seconds. They were even down. They were losing those initial duels, but the trade fags were so successful. Let's enjoy these replays for a moment. Zen, he comes out, sees two players both preoccupied with T-Con, and then the third man in Z? Well, excuse me. How dare you just bombard that A site? 15 rounds up for Godsend, and I mean, it, just by the nature of the timing in those last few rounds, I never expected something so fast, but it seems to have worked, and Godsend could very well try to follow up with another. The smoke in front of Crystal slows him down. That first fight on Tcon has already come to a close. There is that chance for Chopper to aggress up the B site, but instead he holds, and he calls for Ida's balance to rotate over. The one op, one sniper left in this setup. It's been a key piece for Spirit it since the gun rounds got going and oh baby there's a world where they extend into the box halls this is a counter honestly the cps oh they're waiting for it zen had a chance good trade by sticko but there's still an op on the b site where the rotates off. go after they see someone push out of ladder is the question they've got the attention of z they're hoping itis balance can hold this basically oh he's gambling godsend going to upper wow that could be a smart move there's still a Z player, however, and he's got an op, I think. Oh, no, he doesn't. No, yeah, that's the thing is like, it, it's, it could be dangerous to go upper, but it's more so dangerous if the sniper is back at this position. With Ida's balance on the bomb site, had they actually just committed to the top whoa. shelf? That's a great duel, but they do double back. And yeah, whoa is right. Team Spirit forfeiting A, or excuse me, B. And in doing so, this, this tasks SDY with holding the B bomb site. And like we said, he's not the opper. At this distance, it's just going to be AKs challenging him. He doesn't want to really hyperextend because that's why. Farlig has the weapon advantage. Idis Balance is going to come back into the bomb site, trying to get this even as fast as he can. Farlig hyperextending, looking for these fights, looking to close map one with double the round count of what Team Spirit have been able to put up. Crystal's up close. He's going to get his head popped. Disbalance in with the op frag. Farlig has everything to do, and he is toppled. This one's not done yet. Team Spirit, the 2v3 works, and they're going to get to save that double sniper. They didn't have to be all the way out there, but they still could have won. It was just a, a fantastic round for my disbalance. The setup adjustment seemed a little bit strange. Now, of course, we see that Godsend the entire time have set their eyes on B, and their intention is to go B. They're just going to do it delayed. But uh, whoever asked for the rotate, I feel like, almost put the round in jeopardy. Whether it's some Dae Young who said, I'll watch inner with this rifle from Z, which would be a great position for an op, or I just balance who's like, I think for sure they're going outside. I'm going to go old bomb and hold down this ladder angle. It seemed a bit strange. Now, I'm sure they were just very concerned about the fact that Godsend have been lurking like crazy, so they didn't want to get caught off guard on a ladder guy swinging on Z maybe. So maybe that's why. But overall, yeah, that, that got so airy. Another opening kill outside, nice and quick as well. Crystal making a ton of space. They're a flash to help him out in this situation. It looks like he's gonna push through and it's a perfectly placed flash. Yep, hold is solid so far. Double smoke, three flashbangs left and they're gonna use one to extinguish the flames. Aha, uh -huh. SDY finding that angle over towards the ladder room so it's not getting any easier for Godsent. Stiko low health, Farlig dangerous as ever, but he's still back at a distance. 
Nico's gonna find the timing. Clotheslines SDY. Magic's on the other side of the smoke. Gives him a chance to get close, but peeks in, shuts that down. Now Farley spotted and legged. The USP swaps good enough. Team Spirit to double digits. Only five rounds making the difference. The CT side is working, but they have zero margin for error. Zero margin for error. They've almost lost this game twice now in the second half alone. And they already had a very bad first half. There's a chance that Godsend could easily win around, especially considering their style is to like go for all of these lurks. They're comfortable five man lurking, four man lurking, just testing out if anybody can get like a spray transfer entry, basically. And it, it seems to be good enough. That that's the the sphere for Team Spirit. They've got to watch too many things to keep up with Godsend. And all Ouch. not Eagles? on this round. Deadly. Hey man, we've seen train games finish with the pistols. No, there are no down stranger. To the... Oh, sticko. Big sticko. He's he's doing the flush alert. This is Olaf, <laughs> the Z train. Sticko flanks him. Dude, there's no way Chopper knows either. No, he's dead, man. He's dead oh, meat. Knife, is this knife, a knife? knife? No. Whoop. Doesn't decide to go for the gun right away, so he's still tasked with the deagle. Slips by, trying to find timing versus Mir, but he loses his head. So sure enough, the bomb plant comes off of it, and look how forward the terrorists are. But nobody for Godsent has been able to get their hands on that rifle. So still well equipped for the retake. Mir's about to walk into two bodies. They could line up. He could mow them down. And all of a sudden, it's looking good. Yes, sirree. I just balance in with the flash assist. It makes it all the easier. A third kill from Mir. Mir's retake, and it all falls on Zen. P250, but time, time is the biggest issue. He's inside of the smoke with eye disbalance, but he can't find the knife. The stick being stuck. No. Zen. Oh, oh he gets Wait, it. Wait, could they lose? Oh. No. Oh, my God. One, se one second, and one health on eye disbalance, and Zen walks by him, knifing like ships in the night. Like some carnivorous centipede just walking through, slicing the air, hoping that someone would be in front of him. And he was so close. Ungodlike for him to just stick that smoke. It comes down to the millisecond. Oh, if he had been able to knife the diffuser off of it, then it's then it's GG. But instead, he comes through with the P250 kill on the coverer of the smoke and just couldn't find him in time. Okay, if that doesn't let you, if that doesn't make you feel like you were on the brink of defeat for Team Spirit, then I don't know what will. No, yeah, these guys are standing like, they're standing on the plexiglass at the top of the CN Tower looking down right now. Like every, every moment of their life is, is fear because they have just, it's come so close. <laughs> uh, and with no tactical pause, all of them have to kind of reset the heartbeat, take a deep breath, refocus. You know, 1612, 1611, still a very real possibility. But this one's not over yet. And the early damage versus Godsend, well, that's just going to bolster Team Spirit here in the 27th round. This is the commitment. There's no way they fake. It's right down ramp. Chopper in position over by the spools. He's going to chip away the HP from so many of these players. But a smoke grenade to cross. And I just balance with the off. Not the best weapon for this. And he misses the shot versus Seiko. This is going to give space to the bomb plant unless Magic comes up big. They do have the flank wrapping round. Madden and Crystal both in the depths of the box halls, kind of welcoming this attempt. But Stiko, he's actually also moved past the train lane, and yet the flank is still successful. Crystal's waiting for it. But Mir gets the best of him. Mir, quick headshot. Now knowing that there's another offer up there. But Stiko's been spotted and they've got it. Another retake here for Team Spirit. It looked like Godsend had just slipped through the cracks, whether that be back behind trains or up above on shelf. But it comes up short again. Three more rounds. Wow, they could really do this. Holy smokes, man. These are... Uh on a knife's edge every single time. Magus drops this, I think it's maybe it's eye disbalance or Magus drops an eye, drops a, a flick. I think on Sticko who's walking out behind the bomb train. 
and that's when they're like, oh, well, this is the time. For for the first time, you have Godsent playing the normal post plant positions inside the box ho hogs, inside the box halls, excuse me, on the ramp, watching upper, playing together instead of push forward, waiting to die early. And they don't do it. This time though, they were low HP. So it's still scary. It's not like it's honestly not like Godsent are just gonna blow this whole lead now. You you still see how many situations they're getting themselves into that are favorable despite their HP. Yep. And the thing is, is, is when you've had three or four of those ridiculously close rounds, you just have to remind yourself, keep that up. You only need one. This whole comeback from Team Spirit doesn't matter if you just get one more. If you let this slide into overtime, everything's back in question. Three more attempts. And they're very well equipped here in the 28th round. SDY is going to take the initiative off of the flash, clears out ladder room. Stiko is holding him above, though. 45 yeah. seconds. And Stiko, he only has a smoke is the problem. He can't flush him backwards for far like the kill, but they know he's in ladder, so they can keep him, keep eyes on him. Damn, Crystal Whoa, they're making a lot of progress. Molotov. Wrapping hell already. Look at this outside sight. They've got the perimeter on lockdown. Yeah, Magix, he's going to be feeling really pressured. Mir's trying to give cover. SDY oh. gets blindsided, and Farling comes in with another op. It's going to have to be the three versus five. Magix just trying to tuck into the bomb site, hits the bomb carrier. Oh, and it's getting scarier because he's in with another frag. It's a two versus two. It's even. Ten seconds left. Stiko, he picks up that bomb, clears Chopper from the closest part of the smoke, and they know where Magix was last at. He peeks 